There we go. And I will be editing this, so no worries about the bloopers or if you guys talk, it's really cool. Okay, let's get started. I am Alyssa and I have a brand called Alternative Fashion. This is my product. And we during the break I'll let you guys look through it. It's really it's actually really natural and organic and bohemian and casual. I use all natural fibers. And the reason I do natural fibers is because we are of this planet Earth and we have to cover our bodies with plants, you know, just like the Earth is covered with plants. So I have a lot to discuss with you guys. And I have everything planned out, so everything's kind of sequential. And we'll just take it from each subject. So I'll tell you a little bit about me first. As a growing up, I was always artistic. I always really enjoyed painting, and that's why we're here. We're here at Heart Healing Arts of New Hampshire. They are they put together this program for as an art therapy. And Renee, did you want to take a couple minutes and share a little bit, or? Sure, sure. Um, so it's me and this other woman, Michelle. And I'm an art therapist. Um, technically, I'm an expressive therapist, so I use art, music, movement, psychodrama, and drama um, to help heal. And healing comes in many different forms, um, as I'm really excited to learn about. Um, and we also do, one of our missions here is um, altered art. We use old records, we dumpster dive out back to, to take another man's trash, and turn it into our treasures. So yeah, pretty uh, online and um, with what I'm assuming you're going to talk about. Yeah, I just, I love her mission and her goals with art being therapeutic. I actually spent a lot of time in my life using art as a stream to work with my health. When I was painting and drawing, it was always a form of communication and it really helped support my life. So that's why we're here. We're here to collaborate with Renee because really support her mission as well as my own. So today we'll get into more about my bio, my background. I have a lot of illustration and painting work that I've put together. I had published works doing art with painting and illustration, more illustrative painting, not so much fine art like you know, oil colors or watercolors was really illustrative. However, I just love to draw. I love to draw fashion. <laughs> I drew and drew and drew and drew and drew tons of, you know, clothing when I could only draw a stick figure at one point. So it was really just um, a really hard work, hard work to actually be able to draw and to actually get to where I'm at now. And it took me that phase of drawing and drawing and drawing until I tackled the sewing machine, which is still, to this day, not perfect. But, I, and as you can see though, I've strived and strived to make my clothing as perfect as possible without a sample maker. <laughs> so, I, I really do, I really am very proud of my work, um, being able to make it from pattern to design and that's something that I really want to keep executing throughout my time as a designer is because I think the importance of the process from bringing it to pattern to sketch to, to design and being able to work through each phase is how I am connecting with my own fashion and connecting with my mission my goals and how I identify with this clothing be able to transform my my well-being. So I did have some schooling at the Academy of Art University. I was a fashion designer uh, major and I did basically minor in illustration because I just did a ton of jarring um, fat my fashions because that was really my element my channel to be able to uh, work on my fashion and then I've always been obsessed with fashion magazines just really just a ton of reading my fashion magazines and being able to get lost in the dream world of cutting up and collaging with my the, the fashion prints so it's just it's, it was just so much fun and it continues to be fun and really it, it's as much as it is a challenge 
creating a fashion brand, it's so worth it and it's going to be worth it overall in the long run. And I do also encourage all of you, I have um, Facebook and social media, so if you ever want to, I know that many of you can ha have been able to catch up with seeing some of my pro my projects, I have a new video campaign, editorial video campaign coming up for my new brand. Um, and an artist videographer has been working very hard on putting this together, and I just can't wait to have it published. So, in regards to future projects, I am working on spring summer sixteen, and it is in the works. However, I've kind of been putting myself into many different directions. However, you kind of have to do that at this rate. So beyond my design um, projects as a fashion designer, I also have a news media network. Um, my news media network is all about what I'm doing right now. I'm talking. I really love to talk about my mission, love to talk about fashion and how it's affecting our health. And I know that when you have a fashion brand, you have to kind of stand behind the clothing. You can't stand in front of it. So with this news media program, I'm actually allowing myself to channel um, how I can present my mission, my goals, and my studies of 15 years of studying fashion and be able to throw it out into the universe and really engage the audience with being able to talk about lots of different subjects, even with eco-beauty. I know that there's a dilemma with petroleum jelly using on your lips and that petroleum jelly is the same types of ingredients you put wearing your wearing plastic polyester so eco beauty also is a really important aspect of my of my my work so i be i always support mineral makeups botanicals uh, essential oils really trying to work with fashion and beauty. It's not just about your clothes, it's actually what you put on your body, your skin, the lotions. And having some of my past health issues has made me aware of why I can't use certain products and where I'm going and why these more botanical, natural, plant-based products really just help support my health and make me feel just natural, just just really just earthy, and not to the point where it's you know I'm not showering or whatever. I I'm really I I do I bless this earth, and as much as I am a hippie, I'm also a professional and a business type of person. So I like to dabble in all areas of expressing my uniqueness, and that's why I like to make fashion so that I can enable other people to express their own uniqueness. Because a lot of my fashions really, they just really help enhance a woman's confidence. And when I do have a menswear, it'll be able to enhance men's confidence as well. So, and not just confidence. I'm just, I'm just saying confidence is feeling, feeling, feeling whole, feeling well, being able to connect with other people because I know that there's a lot of separation. Um, clothing can really separate or it could bring union. And a lot of these different labels and niches out into the universe are actually repelling the people's way of connecting. So another really important aspect of what I do is I try to make fashion be responsive, be a responsive conductor of being able to, you know, welcome other people into our lives. You know, and it's just it's a really fascinating and like I said, it's a little out there, but it's totally fun and it's totally worth it. And it's going to be um, the future of fashion. So, let's move on. And so, at my work as an emerging designer, I started last spring in 2015, and I've been going pretty strong. I have a, a few interns working with me, and they also are in very supportive of my work, and they're very talented and creative themselves. I like to credit and give them as much um, authorization to utilize their talent and creativity so that they can not just feel like an intern but be a team a team player so um, having interns on board really gets me aware that okay I have people supporting me and backing up my mission and my brand so let's do this let's get this started <laughs> so 
with being an emerging designer, it takes time, it takes work, it takes effort, it takes lots of different things, but being able to just channel and take my baby steps to get where I need to be is just worth the effort, it's worth the time, it's worth the patience. I do feel like my product um, can cater to many different um, ages. I, I know this is more um, casual, kind of surf inspired. And then we also have something a little bit more business professional. Um, we, I like to work and make clothes that are effective through different types of personalities and moods that can really transform and enhance your mood as well. So, now that we've got through that, we're going to hit on what makes a product sustainable. Um, naturally, there's so many different elements that goes into making a product sustainable. Uh, part of it is the product itself. And making, having a product be sustainable, it has to really be coming from natural resources. If we have a product that's Make, made from petroleum oil, a uh, byproduct of petroleum oil, it's chemically, not, it's chemically not aligned with the earth. And the earth needs to be balanced. And at this point, the toxins that are relevant in our fashion industry is what's causing these problems with global warming, um, disease, all types of different ailments. Um, we naturally are more connected with our health and what we put in our body. We want to say what we consume is really important. And yes, I think that fashion is meaningless without your health and nutrition is the number one component. I always endorse um, whole foods, organic foods, cleansing, you know, doing the fruits and the veggies. But it's so unique. It's so unique. Your, your, your diet and nutrition is so unique to you. Following a diet plan is a disaster. And it's just like when you follow someone's wardrobe plan. You're always going to have to, you're always going to identify with your clothes in a, in a unique way. So that's another really important part of having the product be sustainable. Because having the plants nourish your body, topically, is similar to eating fruits and veggies. And I know that sounds a little bit like, okay, how is that possible? Well, if you think about it, think about the, the oils, like say you put natural almond oil. You're, the oils are going to seep into your skin and you're gonna get the nutrients from those oils. Um, your skin is porous, it is the largest organ in on your body and it cannot filter out toxins so your liver filters out the toxins your skin cannot so when you put any type of chemical on your skin whether it be fabric or it be an actual you know skin lotion or detergent laundry detergent is a big one it's actually seeping through your skin and those toxins are not being able to be filtered out like the liver does as a machine. So that's why I really, really, really endorse natural foods, eco-beauty, and as well as natural plant-based fabrics. It's just really important. I mean, I can't, I can't tell anyone the stress about how our separation from the earth is, is actually sort of symbolic to how our fabric can be a separation from ourself. And when we put on those plastics, we're not letting our body breathe. And plastic is actually the number one fabric out there. It is the number one fabric that's being produced. It is in demand like wildfire. And that is the problem because when we have this constant demand of plastic fibers, we're actually producing more and more and more. So we're gonna constantly just keep wearing these plastic fibers and 
we're affecting our body and our ecosystem. And I know you guys are, I, you guys have, I know a few of you guys really, really, uh, totally, like, feel me with this. Because I know most of you are all wearing cotton. And let's say, we walk on the ocean barefoot. How, how do we feel? Good. Amazing. <laughs> Today. Yes. So we'll feel good. <laughs> when let's say you know we're in some kind of tropical island, we're walking on the ocean barefoot, and the electrons from the sand is just going through our body, and we're just being grounded, and we're getting full of these electrons, and we're naturally getting more energy. We're being fueled by the earth. So when we put on these plant-based fabrics, we are actually fueling our body with energy. Um, versus synthetic fabrics the plastic the plastic actually works as i'll give you an example plastic bag or saran wrap you're saran wrapping you know your leftovers it's sealing there's no air getting in there is there no there's no air getting into that when you seal mm -hmm. your leftovers so that's like when you put that plastic on your body you're sealing you're sealing it so it's not breathing. And when we get those f f those natural fibers, we're getting the, br the breath work. We're getting the breathing through our skin. And it, our breath work does not just come through our mouth. It actually comes through our skin, which is the largest organ of our body. It's actually one of my favorite topics to talk about because it's really fascinating. I mean, to think that our fibers can help breathe, our body breathe. It is almost a phenomenon, and it's really it's something that's going to be reminiscent of the future of fashion, and it's going to be really relevant. I mean, I'm not saying that this is bizarre thinking. I know it's out there. We've got the eco-fashion industry moving along. However, what I'm here to tell you today, there are definitely some innovative concepts that you may have not have heard yet. So, let's move on. We've got the actual product. What makes it sustainable? If the product is made out of plants, it's totally sustainable. So we let's look, let's look here at the three different types of fashion. We have the plant-based, the animal, and we have the synthetic. What do I say like is the best? Is synthetic the best? Well, certainly not. After I talked about that, we won't go there. But Let's say we have animal, wool, angora, um, leather, all these animal skins. Well, there's a lot of controversy. If you're vegan, if you're not vegan, should we be wearing animal? Well, this comes to a person's philosophy. What do they believe in? What are their ethics? What is their intuition? In regards to survival and being able to, like, say the Native Americans, they needed to wear those skins. They were living in teepees. They had no facilities like this where people could stay warm. It was a necessity. People had to survive. They had to wear the animal skins. They also did a lot of um, spiritual work in regards to killing the animals. They blessed the animals, all the ceremonies. So I totally understand where they were coming from. But to this day and age, it's actually not necessary to wear animal. Then we say, okay, it's sustainable. You know, if you're wearing leather shoes, they last 30 years. If you wear a synthetic pair, they last maybe a few. So we're getting, we're, and we're getting, we have to deal with the sustainability of the product as well. So leather can outlast ve vegan, synthetic fibers. Well, let's just take it to the innovation of our products, the technolo technology of products, they're, they're coming out with kelp leather, they're coming out with all sorts of cork leather, uh, they're coming out with bark leather, bark cloth, you know, there's different products out there, no they're not necessarily on the market, there's no demand for it, yes we can make a demand for it, because that's why we're here. And the best part to being able to get those vegan products made from plants, not necessarily synthetic, and we'll get to that in a second. Go online. 
because you're not going to necessarily find your products in shops unless you know you have a boutique and you're cool then you can find you can find cool products so in regards to <laughs> sorry so so let's say we have vegan animal synthetic plant plant goes first animal goes second I only say animal goes second if it's cruelty free and you know if you're wearing animal it's not as bad as plastic sometimes you know if you want a, a really warm coat wool may be your best bet also if you want say a synthetic coat you know we're dealing with a lining we're dealing with a polyester lining so there's going to be some advances in the future in regards to our products and the technology but we have to work with what we have and I'm not saying everybody needs to just go wear plants it's really not the answer at this point we don't have a demand for it that we can actually enable that to happen but we are slowly progressing in this day and age and I, I feel like even being able to put a bulk of your pr product or even um, make sure just your first layer is natural that will help a lot and be a, a really uh, important contribution to your wardrobe so let's move on here transportation shipping so in regards to a product where there is this controversy between local and global okay we can go local we can go global what's the best there is really no best solution Local is great, however, fair trade and helping support the empowerment of underprivileged, impoverished places around the world is just equally as important. Fair trade is totally, I'm totally an uh, endorser of fair trade. I feel like there's got to be some more equality on this planet and there needs to be a balance with our economy. Now, when we support fair trade, we actually support the education because a lot of these artisan groups and workshops they're actually um, creating educational plans and programs for these people so that they can elevate they can get from seamstress to director to wherever to have their own you know plant so I'm feeling like when you do support fair trade in going global we're actually creating this collective consciousness. When we go local, it's actually very important. It's, you know, we, we want to have that community base, but being able to ce celebrate the overall global community is even more um, dynamic and just cool. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so packaging. So then we get to packaging. Um, I've worked into retail for the better part of, I don't even want to tell you, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's been about 15 years plus, um, 15 years or more. It, retail was really my standby. Um, didn't really have an acclimation. When you're an artist, you really have to push through and go into those different um, settings. And retail was actually a blessing for me. I've done fabric stores. I've worked in management sales I've worked in the back room I've done supervising styling merchandising marketing blogging you name it I've done it but the retail actually helps you spread your wings it gives you access to different elements of the fashion industry to explore and really learn and engage people I love talking to people and I love working retail because you get to you get to talk to your customer and you get to help them. You get to help them find a product that will support and encourage their life. With packaging, of course, paper is perfect. Plastic, not so much. When you see, um, when you do manufacturing, a lot of these products that are being produced are being put into plastic packages. Hundreds, thousands of plastic packages. We're not even talking about plastic fiber here. We're talking about the packaging being really just toxic. So not only are we dealing with the plastic fiber, we're dealing with how these people are packaging. Like billions of billions of garments being folded and sealed into a plastic to be shipped to 
a store to be unpackaged and thrown out. Plastic is not the answer. There is hemp plastic. There is a plastic now being made made out of hemp. Liter did you guys know that? How cool is that? No more plastic, hemp plastic. Hemp plastic is compostable. Hemp plastic is biodegradable. Hemp plastic is going to be the future of plastic because plastic as a uh, petroleum byproduct is just not cutting it. Look at the oceans. There is, uh, you know, it's covering the oceans. Sea life is dying, and that's not just the oceans. It's basically our livelihood. You know, it's our our life. So packaging is so important to a product, and I really want to stress that that being able to, like, maybe take away the plastic packaging, use compostable, use, don't use packaging, just put it in something and then, you know, just do one package versus so many different packages. There are ways that we can control our use of plastic and the packaging is really an amazing place to just start. Just start by being able to use those biodegradable pr products. Okay, and we covered where the materials are sourced, actually where the materials are sourced. So here we have another issue. And um, when I'm dealing with, hold on a second. Where the materials are sourced. So we have a local shop, a local fabric shop. Say they sell fabrics and they're all organic GOT certified. GOT certified is Global Organic Textile Standard. It's a great certification program for anyone who uh, works with organic fibers. If they're certified organic, you know you're getting a product that is probably, it, it is tested, certified, like they wear lab coats, that serious. <laughs> um, but say you're dealing with a fabric store and they're saying they're local, but they're, bu they're, pretty, they're bu buying their notions and their buttons and their trims in China. China is not the best place, for the most part, China is being exploited. They're being exploited by their production and everything. So they can't, those local shops, they can't necessarily say they're local if they're buying products that are not fair trade or they're not um, ethically created. So there's a lot of where your materials are sourced. You know, a lot of designers there's they they're calling themselves eco sustainable, but if they're buying notions and trims that are not necessarily being sourced from a specific place that is ethical. There's a whole transparency value chain that we are trying to uncover and there are new technologies where we are going to be able to really find that transparency level, really get to each stage of where the product is being created, where the materials are sourced, how they're packaged, you know, who the people are actually making the product. Um, and the transparency is actually another way for us to get more in control of why and what we're pretty, uh, purchasing. Our purchasing power is more than we think. What we purchase is actually a choice that we make and is going, it's creating our life and it's creating either imbalance or balance. So I just absolutely love the idea of transparency in the supply chain. So our next product. Okay. And then we have where and how the product is sold. We have boutiques. We have online. We have uh, the e-commerce. We have uh, all kinds of ways and channels of how and where our product is sold. Consignment shops, thrift shops, um, department stores, all these different channels of how and where we're purchasing our products is also a contribution of am I making an ethical purchase or not? So being able to decipher where we're purchasing our product and how it's going to affect us, it, it is affecting the, our harmony 
in our world. Like, say I had a boutique, and it had a beautiful environment, and you're you're working with the you're working with a boutique owner. You're working with the product and the environment. So naturally, your environment and where you purchase your product is equally as important. Like, so say you're gonna go to Walmart. Walmart versus a a really, you know, local high-end boutique. Walmart's not gonna give you that feeling, that connection with your clothing. And it's really about that connection. You need that connection when you purchase something because it makes, it transfers a, an emotional component. It's There's an emotional connection with your cloth. So being able to find your purchasing power and purchase at a ethical and environmental and harmonizing place is way more empire, empowering than if you were to go to a, a Walmart. And I don't really want to, I don't really want to say Walmart's bad because I'm not negative like that, but in regards to their, their supply chain and where they're making their product, it's not ranked as a top place to shop. So, let's see. We're at 30 minutes, so we're going to go for about 10 minutes and we have a break. You guys good for 10 minutes? Okay. So, we got local versus global. Organic certifications. Natural versus synthetic. So I know I did already touch base a lot on natural versus natural versus synthetic fabrics, but let me get more, give you more of a down download. Synthetic fabrics. We have spandex. We have acrylic, polyester, acetate, nylon. Nylon is a big one. What can we do without nylons? Everybody wears nylons. There's silk nylons. I'm telling you, I had I talked with someone about this. Silk nylons are sustainable. They last. They do not rip and tear. And not only that, you're not suffocating your 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 legs when you wear nylons. I've I grew up on nylons. I grew up on nylons. I just f found this out when I um was I was in a a. Uh, I worked as a sales and a merchandiser at a boutique in New York City, and there's a really cute boutique called Wolford, and they sell silk nylons. And um, I'm telling you, go silk. I know it's animal. I know it's from a spider. They do have pea silk. Pea silk is available. It is better than nylon because nylon is literally worse than a plastic bag covered over your legs. Nylon is toxic, and acrylic is the worst. Acrylic, if you find a garment and you smell acrylic, it smells like a rubber tire, like no joke. You know, it's it, polyester, not so much. You can't really smell it, acrylic. Acrylic is number one in, you know, the, the chain stores. Acrylic is one of the worst. It's the cheapest, and the reason why it's the cheapest, because they make more money off the product if the material is cheaper. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help our body. So, in regards to sustainability, we want to we want to buy something that's quality made versus something that is cheaper. In the long run, you may you may be the one, or I may be the one, you know, wearing the same garment every day for months. But guess what? My body breathes, and that's more important. It's totally more important than wearing 20 different things and you know just trying to appease others or the you know the fashion style updates. You really want to, and I really want to. I say this about myself: having less of feng shui wardrobe and having the best qualities is. In my boat, it's the best. It's the solution to a lot of this, you know, um, clothing hoarding. And it's an emotional content. I mean, 
I've all, everybody has their phase. I've gone through closets of stuff where I would just have like 50 garments and then I would just wear one of them. I'd wear the same thing every week. I pick it out. I'm like, what am what am I doing with all these clothes I don't wear? So I'll just pick out I'm like, oh, I'm not going to I'm going to wear this outfit every single day all week long, but all the other clothes don't they sit there because why? Most of them were plastic. So I actually intuitively knew that those pro, those clothings were not supposed to be in my body. So I, I just love talking about this and I could talk about this for a long time. Um, let's move on to the, the trend of recycled polyester. So I think that a couple of you may already know about this. Um, actually maybe you all have, maybe I probably already talked to you guys about this, no I'm just kidding. Um, recycled polyester is not sustainable. Why is it not sustainable? For one, when you recycle polyester, you're actually creating another cycle to make more and more and more and more and more. Not only that, polyester we can't wear. So that's just a given. We're not supposed to be wearing polyester, and I'm not trying to be a bully about this, okay? I really don't think we should be wearing polyester because it is a health hazard. And we'll get into this more. I am very passionate about polyester. I feel like if it doesn't belong in the landfills, it doesn't belong on our body. And recycled polyester, what they're trying to do is they're trying to recycle plastic bottles to keep them out of the landfills. Well, why are we going to put them on our body if they don't belong in the landfills? It just doesn't make any sense, for one. And I did read a study. I read an article. I'm sorry I cannot reference it. But they did say that they are using brand new plastic bottles to make fabric. Why is this? That's not recycled for one, so they're getting away with... They're not getting away with anything. They're, they're, they're not getting away with anything because it doesn't help us. When you wear recycled polyester, it's still on its last phase because they're not going to... On their last phase, it's still going to end up in the landfill. So a lot of sustainable designers are saying yes. You know, we're making a product with recycled plastic bottles. We're sustainable. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not sustainable. Sustainability is the ecology of our earth and it's the ecology of our body. We are part of that earth. If it's not sustainable in the landfill, it cannot be sustainable in our body. So this, so the whole catch with the recycled polyester is we have to be able to identify why is it such a demand? Why do we love this recycled polyester? Why is it so, you know, in vogue? It's in mode. The reason being is a lot of these uh, manufacturers of te and textile suppliers, they're creating these fibers with advanced technologies, advanced machinery, advanced equipment. This, this advanced technologies, they're using a poor material with advanced technology. Now, why are they gonna spend all this money on technological, technological, technology, excuse me, technological equipment <laughs> when they're using a cheap material? Do you see where this is a little bit lopsided? Reason being, I can't even give you that answer. I don't know why they're doing that, okay? It's a little bit silly. And I think where we're getting at is if they, if we were to promote the technology, the technology of plant-based we would be actually doing the balance. We'll be creating the balance. They want to make money. That's that's the main the main thing. And with our economy, we can't always afford natural fibers, unfortunately. Sometimes it's what we can afford. It's what the demand is. And the public demand, there's a lot of poverty, and it's not just overseas. There's poverty in the U.S., there's poverty all over the world, and it doesn't necessarily lead to bank accounts. There's a poverty about separation, and our separation is 
separation of plants. And plants, plants is life, plants is growth, plants is love, it's earth, it's balance, it's health. So that's why all of my products are made from hemp and cotton and linen. I do use a little bit of rayon. It's a cellulosic fiber. It's manufactured, it's mechanically processed. It is made out of vegetable plants. However, it's treated mechanically, and they do use chemical treatments to break it down. So, hey, we all are at our stepping stage, and I think that being able to introduce natural fibers, and also, you know, yes, I can say, and I can say that no, I think it's always going to be an evolution. There's always going to be phases in life. There's going to be times where we're going to, you know, where we try our best, we do what we have to do, but being able to work with the demand of what's going on, what's happening, and be able to slowly process and develop is really the best versus, you know, quickly just changing and being, uh, you know, upsetting the cycle of evolution. So we're all working on it. We're all getting this together. We're all going to get this together, and that's what's so important and really fun. So I think we'll take a break for five for ten minutes, if you guys don't mind. Okay,